Welcome to the Third Floor Views, a production of Chesapeake Family Life, where we talk about health, education, and living with kids. I'm your host, Janet Jefferson. Today, we are discussing travel. What if you did fulfill that fantasy of packing up your kids into an RV and spending your days exploring the country? Here with us today is Kelly Edmondson, and she is doing just that. So big thank you, Kelly, for taking a little bit of time out of your day to, to talk to us. Um, and to our viewers, feel free to post any questions or comments you have in the comments section, and uh, we can try to get to as many of those as we can. Um, Kelly, let's dive in. So yeah. first off, um, just let's start off at the beginning. If you could just tell us a little bit about your, about what you're doing, exactly what, what's happening right now. Sure. So what's happening right now is that um, my husband and I and our four children um, decided to pack up back in September and hit the road in an RV and come west just to um, see the world. There is work involved as well, but um, we just felt it was time to homeschool for the first time ever and um, come west and, and learn this way, see our own country. So we're, I'm currently in San Diego. Um, and it's just been day by day journey. This is day number 30 that we're on. Day 30. So you are in it. You are in the thick I of it. I'm in it, yes. <laughs> and then tell us where you are at this very moment. Yes, I'm sitting in the San Diego Zoo right now. Oh, I love it. So, perfect. <laughs> um, can you tell us just a little bit about um, the decision process on, on making uh, on trying to decide on how do you actually do this? Because I think it is something that a lot of parents, at least right now, talk about like, oh, wouldn't it be amazing? And then I think everyone's like, oh my gosh, I just, I can't handle it. Um, so what did that look like for you? And what, um, how did you finally decide, yes, we're doing this? Right. So um, it was, it was a process. Uh, my husband is the director of a faith-based nonprofit that takes medical professionals to developing countries and they provide free medical care. So typically he is out of the country on you know, 12, 12 countries a year is what he does. So um, some, of, some of the time the children do go with us, some of the time I go, but most of the time my husband leaves us home in Maryland and goes himself. Well, as soon as COVID hit in March, all international travel, of course, was canceled. So for the first time in 16 years, he found himself, you know, at home and cannot travel for, you know, 2020. And normally, as I said, I mean, probably it, it equals a total of, I would say, four months of the year that he's gone total. Wow. So suddenly he's home and we're looking at this is so bizarre for us to have him home. It's been wonderful. Um, and it, it came, it has been a, a huge blessing to our family, but it just changed everything. What, what do we do? Um, because we are a nonprofit, we did, you know, lose some support, of course, because, you know, donors are out of work or just nervous about donating at, at during a pandemic. Um, so we did decide that funding was an issue and we needed to get some more support. Um, and then we also decided homeschooling was the way to go with the, everything up in the air in Maryland and, and everywhere. Just do we send our kids to school? Do we just do the distance learning? And we just decided that what would be best for our family would be to completely withdraw. And for the first time ever, I actually considered homeschooling. That is not who I thought I was. Um, I am originally from Massachusetts, which is not known for homeschooling. So to me, it was kind of a foreign concept, but um, particularly in Maryland, it is a very friendly homeschool state. And I, you know, over the past seven years we've lived there, I've just met so many people that were doing this and I, it kind of got my wheels turning. Um, but then with the pandemic, it just was like, you know what, especially watching the distance learning that we all had to do, um, you know, from March until June, I thought, okay, I can do this we can do this and um, maybe I can do this even better <laughs> um, if we just, you know, get the school out of the way. And so that was, it was a huge decision. We went back and forth about, um, I think I really just thought we would be at home doing it. And then my husband was the one who mentioned, he's an adventurer and he mentioned, let's, let's get an RV and go West. And at first I poo-pooed the idea um, because I thought like really, 
who does that? You know, <laughs> do, do real people do that? Like we're normal. We're real people. We're not, there's nothing special about us. We're just regular people. And, um, the more we thought about it, we just decided that this is the time, like it's never going to happen again, never in the history of the Edmondson family will this happen because the countries are going to open up, the pandemic is going to disappear, we're gonna get a vaccine, you know, it's, it's something's going to happen where we're not going to be like this eventually. <laughs> we keep saying this anyway. Um, and so we decided that now is the time because there will never be a time like this again. And um, our oldest is 14 and that's a perfect age for, he still wants to be with his family. <laughs> um, he still likes us, so there's not, there's not that pull of, you know, having to be with friends and that type of thing. So it really, it really ended up being a perfect decision. Um, we did a lot of research first, getting books, online research. There's different apps about RVs because we are not, we have never been in an, I've been in an RV. Um, so this, which we'll get into other conversations, but um, so yeah, so he just researched a lot and we did it. We bought it. We bought a used one um, because we researched that's the way to go. You buy a used one, then you can sell it um, and packed up. I am a family nurse practitioner and I practice pediatrics. I do. I have a per diem job. So I have done a little bit of telemedicine um, since we've been on the road. Um, but yeah, that's what it looked like. And we just pulled out in September and we'll be back in December. So so how long did it take you to go from your husband saying, what if we get an RV to you saying, okay, we're doing this? I would say he mentioned it probably, he probably mentioned it in May. Mm -hmm. And I would say that by July, I was on board. I have to tell you, I have certain friends that I didn't tell because I knew they would be like, do it, do it. <laughs> and so I was like, um, you know, I just, you, you know, you just think of things like you try and be pragmatic about all of it and look yeah. at all the, you know, so um, it tried to be the voice of reason. And so, yes, it took me a few months. And then when he really was saying we can do this, it would be great. I mean, the idea is great. I, I don't know anyone who wouldn't think the idea sounds lovely for educational reasons and family right. time. Right. Um, you know, you just look at all the realism involved and you think, okay, these are the reasons why not. Right. So yeah, it, I would say it took a couple of months and then I, then I was full in, all in. And um, it is, it is, you know, kind of like a dream come true that we're doing this. So, well, that's funny. Oh, I was just going to say, it's funny because you talked to, you know, when we started telling people we were going to do this, it was really interesting to me how many people said to me, oh yes, when I was 16 or, you know, when I was 12, like, there's all these people that have the story of when my parents took me out West and it might not have been an RV. It might've been a one week trip or a two week trip in their van, but they all have these amazing memories of going West. And so that was really encouraging to hear all of those stories. I didn't have anybody say, oh, that's ridiculous. That's a bad idea. No one has said that. So that's awesome. That's, that's so nice to know that there's so much support out there. Um, let's unpack sort of what it looks like in reality. So sure. what does a typical day look like? Is there a typical day? Do you have a routine? And if so, what does it, what does it play out like? Yeah, that's hard. Um, I would love to say we have a great routine, but it just doesn't work that way. Um, we do. It depends if we're actually driving or if we're going to be parked. There have been times where we've been parked, you know, for up to a week at an RV park. Mm -hmm. And that that is much easier to have that routine. I usually try to start school by nine o'clock. Um, again, I should back up and say we did school for a month before we left. Mm -hmm. Actually, I started math back in July because I have two in algebra this year. Um, so I wanted to make sure we really were nailing that down. So I kind of eased into it. And so this wasn't a huge, you know, a huge change where every single thing was new. The schooling we had kind of already started, you know, mm -hmm. um, and they knew what was expected of them before we hit the, ever hit the road. So I usually try and start the day by nine o'clock. Um, I do have a fourth grader that 
I tend to sit with and do more one-on-one -on -one with her. My sixth grader and my two eighth graders are pretty independent. And um, yeah, we just work typically until lunchtime. And most of the, most of the work is done by then. Um, and then we can do if we had something planned for that day, you know, whether it be out and do something, go for a hike or go and see a site, we would typically do that after lunch. Mm -hmm. There are some days where we don't do anything and we're just, you know, just stay at the RV and, you know, do work later. Mm -hmm. um, and then the funny thing about RV parks, which I didn't know was a thing, but <laughs> they offer amenities. So every park has some fun stuff that they offer. Now COVID of course has changed a lot of it, but they may have um, a playground. They may have mini golf course. They may have little shops, things like that. Um, we were at one in Mount Rushmore that had ATVs that you could rent. So there's different things that, you know, you can do without even really going far. And that, that has been interesting. Um, but yeah, typically the normal day is school until at least lunchtime. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe until 2 p.m., um, you know, and then there's a lot of housekeeping that goes on with keeping six people in a 32-foot space organized and clean. Um, I will say it is, you know, it's an RV, so it's very open, which I didn't know about this either, but you get a lot of dust, and yeah, um, it's, yeah that I wasn't expecting. There's a lot of sweeping and wiping stuff down and just you're in such a small space that there's just a lot of maintenance to make sure everything stays livable with <laughs> six people so that gets done every single day um you know and then laundry and things like that mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's pretty much my typical day i do cooking i i do cook we don't eat out much we're you know we're trying to save money so mm -hmm. cooking in my little on my little stove but it's, you know, not much different than home when we're parked, so. Yeah. So an RV is a really small space and a family of six is, is impressive. I mean, I, it makes me think about um, like the tiny house movement and things like that. Yeah. Um, what is it like living, going from your house to yes. such a small space with the whole family? How has that been? And as from a parent's perspective, like how is that for you and your husband with finding some time for self-care and being adults and being good partners to each other? Yes, um, that's, a, that's a great question. I would say um, we had to live, we live much more minimalistic, which is easy for me. Um, it's not so easy for my husband. Um, again, if you've I mentioned previously that we, if you've done Myers-Briggs personality study at all, um, I'm at a strong N and INFP. So my N is strong. So stuff doesn't mean a whole lot to me. Uh -huh. um, where my husband is an ESFP. And so his S is strong. And so he likes stuff. It brings him joy, brings him joy. Um, also our youngest is a very strong ass and she likes her stuff, you know, her little bears and her little, mm -hmm. you know, stuffed animals and trinkets and pillows and blankets and that kind of thing. Um, but when you're with six people in a small space, it means like, you know, just a few outfits. I, and, you know, so I literally said, pick three summer outfits. That's all we brought. Um, and then four or five winter outfits. And um, there is space up underneath of the RV. There's a lot of space underneath. So we have trunks underneath, which again, I didn't know any of this. So, um, so we have trunks, you know, a trunk for shoes and a trunk for winter coats because we made it all the way up to Glacier and spent time up there. Um, and, but now here we are in San Diego where it's warm, we will be hitting Texas, you know, so we're, the seasons have been all over the map. So we had to have, you know, I have scarves and winter hats Wow. But I also have shorts, you know, and sandals. Right. So I had to just minimalistically say, we have to just pick a few of these things. Um, I gave them each a little box to put things, you know, toys or things that mean something to them. Um, I have my, my eighth graders are really big into board games. So we have a drawer that has all their card games and board games, but we, you really have to just, you can't have a lot of stuff. You just can't. Um, and then you have to have that routine of this is where everything goes and everything needs to be in its place. And that's hard for me because I'm not a huge organized person, but you know, I just kind of learned, <laughs> we're just right. kind of learning to go. Um, and yes, there is, 
you know, arguing that goes on. There are, we've, we've worked on that and we've talked about that. You know, we, we need to choose our words carefully. We need to speak life because we are all living on top of each other and it can be a beautiful thing. I mean, the family time has been amazing. It's been, it's been wonderful. And of course we've all, everybody in the, in the United States and probably around the world has had all this wonderful family time since March uh -huh. when COVID hit. I mean, we've all experienced that. Um, so we had already, I think, worked through a lot of that together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. during that time in our home, in our big home. And then we just kind of continue that shrinking our space down even more. I think that helped. I think yeah. those months of prep helped, um, because no one went anywhere. We weren't, we weren't going anywhere. And now it's just got smaller and smaller. If that makes sense. Um, but th that's the beauty of the RV. You park the RV and and we are living outdoors. You know, we spend, we take our meals outside. Um, we grill out most of, we brought a grill in the, in the bottom of the RV. Um, you know, I think that's the beauty of it is that you're finally embracing the outdoors and mm -hmm. that's, that's RV living. It's not living in a tiny space all the time. It's mm -hmm. embracing the world. And um, that's really part of that lifestyle, so. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as self-care, our kids are big enough. Um, we have had, this sounds crazy, but we have had, um, I did have one of my girlfriends turned 40 and had already, her husband had planned a surprise party for her in North Carolina. And I had said yes to it months ago. So I did hop on a plane. I left Salt Lake City, flew all the way to Wilmington, North Carolina, spent a girl's weekend with my friends, left my husband with the kids in the RV and then flew back and met them <laughs> in Las Vegas. So in that time, he drove from Salt Lake City down to Las Vegas with the kids. Um, we also had my mom and dad flew out to Las Vegas last week. Mm -hmm. And my husband and I flew to Chicago for a meeting and my parents stayed with my kids. So we had that nice weekend ourselves. And then when we came back, we all went to the Grand Canyon, my parents as well. Mm -hmm. And so we actually got a hotel room and the kids, we split the kids up you know, sleeping with my parents and us. So we've had time. We've actually been able to have time. Mm -hmm. um, but I think our kids are just big enough now that we don't need a sitter. If we want to go for a walk without them, we can, you know, we, mm -hmm. our boys are eighth grader, so we can, mm -hmm. we can leave them, you know, in an RV. So, um, so that's kind of how we've done that. And it's been, it's been great for us. So um, so with that, with all the traveling and everything, how, um, how have you been handling COVID and are there any precautions that you've been taking uh, to protect you and your family or, you know, or whether it be your friends or parents too, that you're coming in contact with? Yeah, no, not really. I mean, we're nothing more than what everyone else is doing. Mm -hmm. um, the whole world is on board with this. So everywhere we go, everyone is masked up. Um, it's pretty much, I know I, we did notice some states where if it's a more rural area, it's not like Baltimore where mm -hmm. everyone is, you know, getting bounced out of Target if you don't have a mask on or something mm -hmm. like that. It's, it's, so it is a different, I'm sure, cu culture, I would say, um, in these wide open spaces where probably they've never met anyone with COVID. So we have noticed in some areas that people aren't wearing masks per se. It's not enforced, even though it will say it, it's mandated. Um, but you know, we've been in Maryland for so long that we just wear our masks and, um, mm -hmm. and again, like I said, we are, I feel like with the RV life, you're, you're just outdoors so much. It's mm -hmm. not, you just feel like there's not a risk because you're just not coming in close contact with people. Mm -hmm. Um, of course here I am at the San Diego zoo. Yes. Now we're back in the city. Everyone here, they screened us before they even let us into the zoo. Everyone has to wear their masks. I'm not wearing mine cause I'm at this little private part of this outdoor restaurant. But um, so other than that, I, I feel like everyone in the United States is pretty much on board and respectful, regardless of what we've heard in the media. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like everyone is on board. So. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. That's good to, to at least feel that uh, you can do a lot of the things that you want to do and, and try yes. to do it as, as safely as possible. Yes. Um, so I'd love to talk about just like some of your biggest challenges or biggest successes that you've had along the way. What are, what are moments where you're just like, oh my gosh, this is crazy or moments where it's like, ah, this is, I'm living the dream and this is really just beautiful. And I'm so glad it's coming together this way. 
Yeah, so the biggest challenges I would say are um, just an RV is tough stuff. Um, if you don't, if you're not experienced, which we aren't. Um, so it's been an absolute learning curve. I mean, we had the books and we have people we've asked, but I mean, we are really just clueless. And <laughs> so, um, you know, it's dealing with sewage lines. It's dealing with, you know, there's the gray water, which is the clean water and the black water, which is the dirty water. And then if, if you know, if you pull up and it's a 50 amp, we're a 50 amp electrical RV. And then some places only have 30 amp. And, so adapters are needed. Um, there's stuff that you have to put down the sewage so it doesn't stink up your RV. Um, all of these things we, we've kind of learned along the way. The beauty of um, RVing is that the people are amazing. And it's almost like restored faith in humanity to me because I just feel like we hear all this negativity, negativity that has been going on. But when you get out here and you know we pull up next to someone from who knows where, you know, another side of the country. And my husband says, we're new at RVing. It's almost like, welcome to the family. You know, let me help you with this. I mean, they've given us things, you know, one has said, oh, you don't have this adapter. Well, I have an extra one. Let me give it to you. Um, you know, I, I was down, you know, doing laundry. We have to have a bunch of quarters and I was short a quarter. This has happened twice. I was short a quarter. And so I said to my 11 year old, oh, wait, let's run back and get some more change and have had random people say, no, here, here's a quarter, you know, um, which I know doesn't sound like a big deal, but it's just nice people. And um, I just feel like we've, we've experienced that over and over and over. And that's been really great for our kids to see mm. and for us to point out, like people are really nice and, you know, Americans are great. And this is, you know, you don't hear these stories and you don't see all of this. You're just, I feel like just bombarded with all this negativity mm -hmm. and it's really not necessarily like that. And so that's been eye opening. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, and the thing with RVing is it's people from all walks of life, all different, you know, social statuses. And I love it. I love the diversity that we've, you know, that we've been able to see there. Are sometimes it's people like in a little tent and then some pull in in these big fancy RVs that are, you know, probably more expensive than my house in Maryland. <laughs> so, so that has been um, really, really neat too to see. Um, but yes, I guess I got kind of sidetracked on that. But I would say the challenge has just been the RV itself. Um, there was a time where we didn't know in the beginning, and we're driving down the road with the generator on because that we have a big refrigerator full of food and a freezer and the generator guzzles tons of gas. And we didn't realize, we didn't realize that, right? you know? Um, so, which it can be run by propane or it can be run by electricity. So all of these things have been like kind of mind blowing and everyone's RV is different and it mm. depends on what year yours is. Again, we've had, you know, um, random strangers that my husband has asked questions and they're like, Oh, let me take a look. I'll show you where the switch is or that kind of stuff. Um, so that's been huge. And there are times where my husband is like, Oh my goodness, I just feel so uncomfortable with this. Oh, our battery died in South Dakota. We had to get a new battery, um, which fixed a lot of our, you know, we had to get jump started, like just crazy stuff like that. I would say that's been, that's been the biggest challenge is the actual RV itself and learning uh -huh. it. And of course, everyone points out, have you seen the movie RV? <laughs> I have not. And I said, I refuse to watch it until <laughs> after this trip is over, then I will watch it and probably laugh. Um, but so yes, that would, that would be the biggest challenge. And then I would say the biggest successes is just the family time, the experiences that my children have had, you know, just seeing, seeing their faces out at Mount Rushmore. Mm -hmm. We went to Crazy Horse, um, which is, um, I'm not sure if you've heard of Crazy Horse, but mm -hmm. it is a similar um, for the Indigenous Americans, which my sons are actually Indigenous. We adopted our sons. They're um, Indigenous Mexican. And so to see them just really, I think for the first time, really relate to and identify with um, the Indigenous people and just how well done that was. And that was amazing. Um, and we... I think probably because we're not around indigenous people in Maryland, it just hasn't been a thing, but it was really neat to see, um, to see the reaction to that. Um, that was probably, that so far has been the highlight, but we've done, 
um, Glacier and we've done Yellowstone. We saw a bear eating an elk in Yellowstone. Awesome. I mean, it's just, just the, the educational stuff has been ridiculous. You know, my boys are studying geology. I mean, the Grand Canyon, oh, yes. it was like, you know, um, my girls are studying insects and trees. Same thing, all of these places you can actually point to. And so that's been, that's been huge for us, so. That's incredible. How has homeschooling been going and how has it been challenging to differentiate, you know, three different age ages in terms of getting schoolwork done or the fact that it's, you're just sort of a one room schoolhouse and you're out and about and you're just going to learn wherever you are? Yeah. So I know there's, um, I'm not an expert. Um, again, this is my first go of this. Um, I'm not an educator. I'm a nurse practitioner. <laughs> so, um, it has been a, a learning curve, but I feel like this, I feel like we got a soft start with COVID back in March. You know, that's how I viewed that. Um, watching how the teachers did the distance learning and such helped me. Um, so yes, I, we are definitely we are using curriculum. I'm not unschooling. I'm actually trying to get through a curriculum. But I think it's been nice for me to see the things we've been seeing, and it kind of supplements what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, we're still going to go back and we're still going to work on algebra, even though I'm not seeing that in the Grand Canyon per se. Um, and so those, those times it is challenging because I, there is a part of me that was just um, a traditionally educated kid from Massachusetts that still hasn't fully embraced homeschooling. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that part of my mind is like, this is what it looks like. You know, you got to sit down and you got to read all this stuff and you got to write, fill in the blanks and you got, you know. Um, so there is part of me that still does that, um, and hasn't fully let go of everything, but, you know, even today in the zoo, before I got on with you, just talking through, you know, my listening to my husband talk about the, the different types of giraffes, which we have seen in the wild. We've seen them in Kenya and in Tanzania. We've been to those places. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, just talking through those things and seeing how interested my children are, you know, that's real learning. And so that's so encouraging to me um, to see that and realize it's not a curriculum. It's, it's active learning. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I have one more question and then I want to let you get back to what you're doing. Um, and it's, would you recommend this to, to other people? Would you at this point, would you do it again? Would you make the same decision? Um, so sort of at this point in the game, how are you feeling about it? Sure. I think it's great. Absolutely. I feel like we're still just getting started, even though we're 30 days in. Um, I'm learning a lot about myself. I'm learning a lot about my kids and about the world. Um, I will say, and I know this was one of the questions that you would ask that we haven't brought up was about the cost. And it is expensive. And I won't lie. RVing is very expensive. The gas is extremely expensive to actually park at different places has been expensive. Um, so that is that is real. I'm not going to act like that's not a concern. Um, so that would be, that would be my biggest thing would be, yes, you have to budget for it and, and just go in knowing that. Mm -hmm. And, but other than that, you know, if money is not a factor or if you budget appropriately for it, then absolutely. I think it has been amazing. I think it's, I would, I would do it again. I would recommend anyone to take this up take the opportunity and do it. So, Well, thank you so much for speaking with us today, Kelly, and uh, answering so many of our questions about what it looks like to pick up your life and go see the country with your kids. Um, thank you also to all of our viewers and listeners today. Make sure to visit chesapeakefamily.com for up-to-date local information about health, home, and living for today's Maryland parent. This episode will be archived on chesapeakefamily.com and uh, in video and podcast format. I'm Janet Jefferson with Chesapeake Family Life and Third Floor Views. Thank you so much.